for services. Um, and the percent of services provided in county were 4.49%. The average services per, per individual were eight. So I don't know if all of you are familiar with the services that we provide, but just to sort of do a brief overview, um, we provide court and hospital advocacy, a 24 seven day a week, 365 call center where they can call and speak to any of us, uh, advocates, volunteers, uh, specialists at any time. We have the lap call, which, which has become very, very vital during this COVID, which is the lethal assessment program with the police. So the police are trained and we do a lot of work with the police to call us and we really assess whether someone's in lethal danger, which has been very prominent and then make safety plans with them. Uh, we've been doing a lot of personal advocacy, transitional housing and emergency housing. Just to give you an example, during COVID, between April 1st and June 30th, we provided 1,519 bed nights for just a three month period. So it's been very, very busy. On top of it, we pro provide prevention in schools, businesses, outreach, and ongoing support services. This year has been tough, um, but we're here and we've all been here through the COVID virus. And we hope that our towns will support us. And I know that you've all been very generous in the past and we really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Uh, board members, do we have questions and stuff? Uh, Linda. Can't hear you, Linda. Sorry. Um, I am seeing my packet of budget for this year. Oh, Did okay. I can get that to you. Uh, and do, I... you do you have a balance sheet? A balance sheet, yes. Yeah, if you could send us those, then we'll have everything that we, on uh, your agency that we have for everybody else. And uh, sure. uh, I know you do a lot of very good work. And uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yes, we'll send that to you right away. Thank you. Thank you. Or any other questions or comments? No, I guess we're all set there, so thank you. Well, thank you, as my eight rescue animals are crying for dinner, I'm gonna let you all go. Thank you, thank you, okay. everyone. Take care. Right. Good night. Good okay. night. Okay, next we have the Kingswood Youth Center. We have Good somebody... afternoon, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you, Zach. Wonderful. Thanks so much. So I'm Zachary Porter. I'm the executive director here at the Kingswood Youth Center. Our request from the town of Wolf is for consideration for level funding in the amount of $5,000. As many of you know, the youth center, we operate here in Wolf We offer free out of school programs for students in the Governor Wentworth Regional School District. We have four major programs. We offer our after school program. Our BTAS programs, those are beyond the after school, weekends, evenings, school vacations, summer programs, and Club 121, mentoring directly in the, um, in the middle school with, um, with middle school um, youth mentees. Um, we are funded by four towns in total, the towns of Ossipi, Tuftonboro, New Durham, and the town of Wolfboro. Amidst the pandemic, we've um, We've, like everyone, been forced to be agile. We've been challenged, and we've um, we've met many successes um, amidst the many, many challenges. When schools closed, we brought our programs remote. Each week, we did video conferencing with our students. We hosted call-in hours where students could call in and talk to staff. We were able to raise funding through Granite United Way. Um, that was funding that went directly to families most financially impacted um, by the pandemic. And those are families of teens that we serve. And one of our proudest programs is we offered um, a care packages program. So each, um, each week families came, um, we had care packages ready for them. That included groceries, 
household essentials. Um, that's fresh frozen food. We had treats, we had take home activities. One of our volunteers made some wonderful science kits. So through that program, we distributed 16,500 pounds of, um, of provisions of that food, of those activities, um, which went a really, really long way for our, our families. On July 2nd, we reopened to, um, to in-person programs under the state of New Hampshire day camp guidance. We had a wonderful summer. It was a different summer. Our group sizes were limited. Our activities changed, but the core was, um, was the same. We're teaching life skills. We're encouraging positive peer engagement. We're helping our teens learn um, what they need to know um, to, um, to get through this, um, this pandemic, the challenges of remote learning, the, the use of masks, the hands, hand hygiene, the social distancing. Um, so we're providing them a small group safe place to, um, to engage and, um, and learn those important skills that we've, we've all had to learn. So now we're open um, for, the sc for school year programs. We're doing after school programs. And we're also doing some programs um, during the daytime, some assistance with schoolwork. So today we, um, we hosted a group of seven, eight is our cap. We are not mixing the learning cohorts from the, um, the, um, the schools. So we had seven students here today. They arrived at 1230. We did two hours of um, work on remote learning. We did lunch, we did dinner and they're still here for another 20 minutes um, for, um, for enrichment programs. Schools are closed on Wednesdays, so this is a wonderful opportunity for some structure, some peer engagement, some support to, um, to families. So I can't thank um, the town of Wolfboro for your ongoing support enough. Um, more importantly, so I'm here, I'm alone in the office here at the Youth Center. We still have our kids here, so really quickly, I'm just gonna swing open um, my office door so that um, seven of our teens can um, can say thank you to the town. Thank, thank you, Laura. <laughs> and that was Sorry. It's a flop. It was very good. So those are those are some of our kids. And at this time I can take um, any questions in regards to um, our request. Yeah, Paul. Zach, thank you very much for what you're doing. And I mean that very seriously. Uh, last year, I, I gave you kind of a challenge and given that n neither one of us knew that we were gonna have this little medical event around the world, it was, uh, it was probably a, a tough thing to do, but the challenge is still there. I think the, the COVID situation has punctuated the need for all of us to learn how to get connected. And uh, you happen to, hang around with folks that uh, have grown up with this stuff. There's a lot of people in our town who just need, need to learn how to get connected to the internet. And, I don't, and I'm not tasking you, I just, I'm asking you to find a way to build a bridge to, uh, to our seniors and to, and to folks to, to help them just, just figure out how to use the internet. They may not want to, but some people do want to and they just don't know how to do it. And they're lost and they're frustrated and you know, and they're, they're thrashing. So uh, that's my continuing uh, challenge uh, to you folks. But thank you for what you're doing. It's awesome. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much for that. And I'll just say, speak to that and say, I know Amy's here as well. And we've had an ongoing conversation um, about some of these same topics. And um, sadly, we actually just, um, the, I think just last month, um, had some back and forth about this. But the, um, the goal just has to be on hold just for now with everything turned upside down, but it's definitely a long-term or mid-term goal for us. I completely us. understand it. I completely get it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Linda? Yeah, I would like to <clears throat> thank Zachary for his leadership at the uh, Kingswood Youth Center. Um, I'm thrilled that the Kingswood Youth Center took on the mentoring at the middle school that used to be done by Appalachia Mountain Teen Project that has to had to close. And so to find an agency to pick up that, I think that is wonderful. And that they found a way to stay connected with the kids through COVID and programs today. So thank you, Zach, uh, Zachary, for all that you do for the community of, uh, of Wolfboro and surrounding areas. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah, I'll second that. Uh, Dave Bowers. Uh, for the King, uh, Kingswood Youth Center, I have a fully restored player piano with several hundred rolls that I'd be happy to donate it free of charge to the community center if somebody like the Town Hall Public Works Department would come over to my house and get it. But it's fun because the kids can play old time tunes and so forth. But just keep that in mind if it's of interest. Thank you. I think Zach and the team would like a 66 Corvette 327 Fuley engine. Uh, would probably <laughs> help them out. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, thank, thank you, Zach. Thank you, Thank you for everything you do. Have a have a good evening. Okay, next on we have uh, Northern Human Services. Hey, good evening. My name is Valida Saraselli. I'm the area director for Carroll County for Northern Human Services, and I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all tonight. This is my first funding request meeting, so bear with me. Um, just a background on services for Northern Human Services. We are a nonprofit mental health community um, provider. We serve currently 200 clients in the Wolf Borough area. Uh, last year we served 185, so we are going up uh, with the number of clients that we see in Wolf Borough. And the services we offer are therapy, uh, case management, 24 7 emergency services. And we also offer our ACT, Assertive Community Treatment Services um, in the town of Wolfboro. And last year, um, as I said, we served 185 clients for a total of 1,577 hours of services. Uh, that came out to a total write-off for Northern of $21,912.68. Um, therefore, we are requesting $7,779 to help out with that um, write-off amount. And I think that's about it. Does anybody have any questions for, for me? Yeah, Linda. Yeah, I'd just like to thank you for showing up this year. <clears throat> Last year, we weren't able to get anybody here, so thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. Hopefully, I'll be here for many years. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank yep, you. You too. Okay. Next, we have uh, Senior Meals. Good evening, it's Amy Capone Muccio, who's, I am the president of the Wolfboro Senior Center. Um, I will do the presentation this evening. I will follow up with Zach, Paul. We've had a couple of conversations about collaborating the Senior Center and the Youth Center on getting some senior savvy, but COVID put an end to all of our wonderful ideas we had, so hopefully we can do that in the future. So the Senior Meals Program, um, you are provided with the summary and the level funding request. However, we have been closed since March. Um, obviously, COVID had a big impact on us. We have a senior group. Um, we also use All Saints Episcopal Church for our location for our meals three times a week. And along with serving a hot meal, the actual mission of our program is, you know, to create that social aspect. So um, we've been closed since March. We have had um, online programs for exercise. One of our volunteers took it on and that's been going well. We do have a request out to the Vestry of All Saints Church to run uh, to go program one day a week. We'd like to try that out and see how it goes. Um, and we will should hear back from them, I would say, in a couple of weeks if we're going to be able to do that program. Currently, they're only open for their church programs at the moment. So 
with that being said, we're we're just unsure where our program stands. I did want to point out that um, we take in weekly meal donations. So last year, before we had closed, we took in fourteen hundred and seventy five dollars. And down below, you'll see where a line where it says gift donation of 500 twice and then 550 those were payments that we made back to all saints so we essentially decided as a board to give our income back to the church so with that i'll take any questions thank you amy board members do you have any questions for amy here thank you amy you're welcome. So we will update, you know, depending on what happens and if we open or if we're not going to open, we will, you know, make a, we will let the board and the board of selectmen know the status of our program. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next on our agenda is caregivers of Southern Carroll County. Hi. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, good. Um, I'm Barbara Hunt. I'm the treasurer of the caregivers group. Um, we have been uh, operating for 33 years. We provide local and out-of-town transportation for medical appointments to our clients. No cost to the clients. We serve the towns of Wolfboro, Tuftonboro, Alton, and Ossipee. And our, our medical appointment trips may extend to Dartmouth, Manchester, Concord, um, various places like that. We are an all volunteer organization. Our drivers, our volunteer drivers are reimbursed at the rate of 45 cents per mile for only for trips, round trips over we do not reimburse them for local trips. Um, we, Wolfboro, accounts usually for about almost 50% of the trips that we reimburse in any year. And we've been pretty much operating on a break even budget from year to year our expenses and income have almost exactly balanced every year except for in 2019 which was the first year we fell short um, so we did ask last of the four towns to contribute an extra five hundred dollars which each of them did and this year we're again asking for that same funding of forty five hundred dollars to help us provide those services which help keep people in their homes if they're able to get to medical appointments and they can't drive or get somebody to take them there. Um, so I think, um, I think that's it, unless you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Uh, questions from any board members here? No, don't see any here, Barbara. So thank you very much. And, uh, okay. Well, we thank you for your past support. I got to say, I'm really impressed with how, how this meeting works. Oh, you've been able to do under the circumstances. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Have a good evening. And um, thanks again. Okay. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. All right. Okay. Next on our agenda is. Uh, we lost track here. We just did take okay, a dinner bell next. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? This is Joanne Crow. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I'm Hi, Joanne Crow. I'm part of the vestry um, for All Saints Church, and I'm here um, to talk to you a little bit about the dinner bell. The Wolfboro Dinner Bell is a collaboration of churches and community members. Off, that offers a warm meal to the community. Um, we do this once a week. Um, and over the last year, we've served um, 1,836 meals to our community um, with folks working about 210 shifts as volunteers. 
Um, we received as donations from the people who attend the uh, dinner bell four, no, $5,661.25 in cash. And what we're asking you is to continue to support us in this effort and, uh, and to meet what was done in previous years, which was $6,000 to help us provide this dinner bell to our community. Are there any questions? Linda. Let me get my mic on. I just want to thank All Saints Episcopal Church for helping uh, with this program. Uh, when we were having problems with it, the church stepped in and became the fiscal agent, and that was very important to keep this going. Um, they do a lot of social services for the uh, town uh, in terms of letting us uh, those agencies use their church, their their um, uh, where our life ministries is. So uh, thank you very much, All Saints, and take that back to your church members for the help that they give to people in the Wolf, greater Wolfboro community. I, I will surely do that. One other thing I should add is that we are now, um, we had shut down Dinner Bell um, due to the pandemic and COVID, and what we have started to do is provide a contactless distribution of food on Thursday night. So we've uh, started the dinner bell again as a to-go contactless distribution. I think that's great. Could I just say something? This is Carolyn Sundquist. I'm also from All Saints. I'm the senior warden. And I, I want to thank Linda for uh, her uh, compliments for All Saints Church. We we try to do as much as we can for the community. So uh, thank you very much for recognizing it. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the board? Okay, I think we're all set there. So thanks again. And, and thank you for everything you folks do there. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Casa here on our agenda. Hi, this is Julia LaFleur. I'm with Casa of New Hampshire. Um, just wanna thank you for your past support. We are asking for level funding again this year in the amount of $1,000. Um, last year, we served 12 children from the town of Wolfboro. Statewide, we served 1,438 children. Um, as soon as the stay-at-home order was put in place, I believe in mid-March, we did see about a 50% drop in reported cases because children were not in school and being seen by um, their teachers and caretakers during the day. So we do anticipate that within the next fiscal year, we're going to see um, a dramatic increase in cases um, that our volunteers will take on. So we are working very diligently to procure funding, you know, like a lot of other nonprofits, um, we had to cancel a lot of our, our fundraising events. Um, we have since moved everything virtually and that includes our training um, for volunteers. So uh, last fiscal year, we had 630 volunteers across the street. Um, three of those volunteers lived in the town of Wolfboro. So we're very appreciative to them. Um, as you may know, CASA, uh, CASA of New Hampshire stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. So we train volunteers who are citizens of New Hampshire who go into courts and speak on behalf of abused and neglected children across the state. Um, and if the court cannot, if we cannot provide a CASA volunteer, the court must then hire a paid guardian ad litem at the cost of $60 per hour um, plus travel costs. So we estimate that last fiscal year, we saved the state about $4.6 million. Um, do you have any questions for me at this time? Board members, any questions? Or No, 
I don't see any here, so is there anything else you'd like to offer or? I um, just want to thank you very much again for all of your support. We really, really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Next on our agenda is 68 hours of hunger and 68 hours of hunger. Hi, Sue Weeks here. Uh, you hi, got our, hi, how are you all? We have had a very interesting year, like everyone else, lots of changes. A year ago at this time, we had just moved into the basement of the Smith Center at Brewster Academy. And uh, we had to move out of there when uh, COVID came along because it wasn't a, um, it was a, such a shared space that they couldn't have uh, too many people down there. So they let us move into the basement of the Citizens Bank property. And now this fall, they have had to use that for one of their classes because they're, they're committed to um, basically self-quarantining all their students. So we've now moved to the garage of one of our members and are seriously looking for a temporary place to get through the winter and um, working on a plan to create a permanent place for us because moving uh, two months worth of food for 175 students is uh, no easy task. Mm -hmm. So we changed our all of our procedures for how many people are involved, which we had to cut way back. Uh, so a few people are doing a lot of work. We had to <clears throat> change the, we ramped up our summer program and fed all the kids all summer that we had been feeding all winter instead of instead of just a fraction. And um, we work, we developed new partnership with the Governor Wentworth Regional School District for distributing the food. The school buses were out. Um, they were picking up our food for us and taking them to the to the schools. So that was great. And that's continuing. Um, we're, so we're feeding more kids, doing more meals. Our donations have been very strong. People have been really recognizing that the need and, and helping out. And so we're able to, and, and the Wolfboro numbers are pretty stable, all things considered. So we are asking for level funding again, the 4,000 that we got last year. We think that will, uh, work for us again this year. I couldn't understand that. Can you repeat that? Have you checked into the availability of trains of train? Have you checked into the availability? Of the train station? Is that what he's saying? Yeah, have you seen have you checked into the availability of the train station for space? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. And um the the Santa's Hot and other town uh, events are going to be there instead of us, because it's a it's a facility that they're able to make uh, one way directional traffic that will work for those purposes. So we can't we can't move there. We're we're still in uh, our president's garage, and her cars are out in the parking lot. Linda? Linda yes, yep. Sue, th thank you for all you do in your group. I know that it has been very valuable to um, our children of our communities that need your support. One thing I found missing from uh, your documents was the 
amount you have in your checking account. We, uh, prior years, you would say, okay, we have X amount. And what we had seen in the past, you had it, you were really fundraising for the next year. You had enough money to go through the current year. So it gives us an idea of, of where you are financially. <clears throat> okay. I don't, I don't have those numbers, but I will get them for you. You can email them into Amy. That'll be fine. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Sue? I don't see any Sue, so thank you very much right, and, uh, thank you. and for everything you do. Thank you. Okay. Next one we have is Children Unlimited. Hello, I'm Barbara Ross. I'm the director of the Family Resource Center at Children Unlimited in Conway. Uh, I first want to thank you for your support. Uh, we are again asking for level funding. Um, we have been very busy during COVID and can and we've actually added staff. It seems unusual, but we've um, we've stayed full on. There's been a huge need. Um, and we serve many families in Wolfboro. Um, we're already up to the numbers we were last year. And it's been very helpful that we have a, uh, a subcontract with uh, VNA in Wolfboro. Shelly Rondo um, is, is a wonderful partner and she sees a lot of families in town. Uh, we continue, we, we've been creative. We don't, we're just really getting back into home visiting, but we've done a lot with telehealth and uh, Facebook live events and partnering with uh, food programs and supplies. Um, I could tell you more, uh, but I, I believe we sent in a lot of information. Um, if you have any questions, please. But again, thank you so much. Hey, board members, any questions? Uh... I don't see any. So yeah. So again, thank you for everything you do, the community and everything, and uh, you know, look forward to things getting better this year and everybody kind of yeah. get back to some kind of normalcy. Yes. Um. And thank you. You're you're all very gracious, and I appreciate it. All right. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Next on our agenda is other business. Do we have any other business to? conductor come up with tonight linda yeah i noticed um that our documents came out uh one-sided um uh, like the budget book and it would be helpful just for the volume of paper we're going to get to double side our budget reports um so that would definitely be helpful to me uh the other thing i was wondering uh that uh, we're coming on to election and we have an ordinance 47-1 that talks about where you can uh, put campaign material and electioneering and also what we mean by campaign material. And I was wondering whether the board wanted to get that up on the website. And then at our regular meeting, I would either the chairman or I could read that um, because I think it's important for people to understand ahead of time where they can and cannot uh, do uh, campaigning, especially when we get into the presidential election. So I just brought that up as a suggestion to the board. And if they're agreeable, we could put it prominently on our, maybe on our homepage of our, our website. I think Linda had Dave Bowers. You had to hand up first here. Does, does the state have any guidelines on that, saying that this happens all across the state? There is some across the state, but this is our town ordinance that the voters passed. Uh, so that's dictate. I think the state requires you have to have a path certain number of feet wide that people can get to the polls, and that is the state. But this had to do with our building, our town hall, where they can and cannot uh, do electioneering. Paul. I prefer to get the information out and let them know where it is than to have to try to tell people they can't do that the day of the election. Yep, no, that's a good idea. 
Paul, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, I agree with the need. Agree with the need to communicate. I'm just wondering, is Randy or uh, Pat Waterman um, already got this thing as a go do or or not? I talked to Pat. The top operator normally talks about that kind of stuff. So is that his duty to get done? I, I don't. I don't care who does it. I just want to make sure that we're not running down a path. And he raises his hand and said, "I was doing that." Elinda. I texted Pat Waterman because I had a question from somebody about whether we had an ordinance. She was the one who provided me the ordinance, and I said well, maybe you'd like to come to a Board of Selectmen's meeting and tell us about it. And she said, I have so much work to do. Would you take run with it? So I said, oh, I'll go question. see and see what the board wants to do. You've answered the question. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other business this evening? Seeing none, uh, we have uh, questions from the press. Is Alyssa out here with us this evening? I don't see her. <clears throat> well, the Boston Globe or the New York Times or something? No? I'm sure the Times is here. <laughs> the Manchester <laughs> Guardian. Manchester Guardian. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Paul's, so here. We want to <laughs> Paul's here. He can get it out. Can't get out yeah. of here. All right. We'll move on to uh, public input. Limited three minutes per person, about to exceed 15 minutes. So if anybody out there, and the public that wants to speak to us. <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll I'd entertain a motion to go into non-public. Move to go into non-public. No, no. Second. We have, a motion. we have a motion and a second to go into non-public. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Paul. Yes. Uh, Dave Senecal. Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers? Yes. Linda Murray? Yes. And Brad Herman votes yes also. So we'll stay right on this channel here, and Mr. Pinier will lock out the public, and we'll just continue on right here. Okay.